Hello everyone, we're going to be doing something in Chronicle. I'm going to be showing you an addition which is going out very nice release. Uh, we're going to go into the Retro Mechanic Stream, shortcut which takes you directly into RetroArch. From the main user interface, you can grab this via Hashi2CE, Modules tab, came at the Mod Hub Games tab. And uh, typically if you want to have games on a playlist, like for instance, we have Adam's Family for TurboGrafx CD, we have uh, Church Style for Sega Dreamcast, Cliffhanger for Sega CD, uh, Ridge Racer for PlayStation 1, and a multitude of 3D games which I added in my last video. Uh, you need to typically go into, uh, right here, Scan Directory or Scan File, but you have to have the custom Playlist Stage Mod installed. And some games are typically tough to add, such as PSP, and of course 3DO and so on. These are ones that you might scan and they might not show up whatsoever. There's a way to work around these with manual scan. Mode activate. We're going to go into uh, what we want to choose for our core. In this case, I'm going to choose the uh, Nintendo core. We'll do Nintendo FCMM core, which is my preferred Nintendo core. For an NES game, should we say. Bam. Then we're going to choose our system name, which is exactly what we're going to apply the playlist to. We'll do Nintendo Entertainment System. Bam. And then we're going to choose our directory. We're going to choose uh, my dummy folder with Nintendo games. Right here. Bam. And then we could choose... Uh, Scan this directory. And then I'm going to put uh, scan inside archives right there. So we make sure we get the games with inside it. And it's basically going to add just the file names alone that it finds. Now I'm going to click start scan. Bam. It's going to add my entire set of games. Look at that. How awesome is that? And then when I go up, it's going to add them all on a playlist here. And it needs to do the entire scan here in order for it to show up on this list right here where the Grange Point is. A great, great game. I'm going to pause the video until this scan completes. And it scans uh, near instantaneously if you don't do it via the Scan Inside Archives option. So if you're doing like Dreamcast games, uh, Sega CD games, which have the hard ISOs, bin queues and such, you can just do it via just the Add File list. But here, I have the Scan Inside Archives to get the proper names. So I'm going to pause it until it's done. Okay, you can see it's almost done. One thing that's very, very crucial is to make sure you don't mess around too much because if the menu crashes while you're scanning, it's not going to do the complete scan as far as the list is concerned. But I've waited patiently, and there we go. They're all added. Look at that. Complete with the beautiful, glorious artwork. How kick-ass is that? Such an incredible, incredible thing. So we do the manual playlist, and we have all the artwork for every game here. Because you just have to have the thumbnails, uh, custom thumbnail HMOD installed to do this. But yes, we got the entire set of all of Nintendo games all added and it only took a couple minutes to do. How awesome is that? I mean, and then we're going to play a game real quick. We're going to go to RC Pro on here. Uh, let's go with the, in reverse there. We're going to go up to the R's. We're going to play RC Pro on One of the toughest games for me to ever beat in all of existence. Just, I've tried... Many, many times trying to beat this game, ridiculously so. Because guess what, guys and gals? The game is unable to be beaten. It's one of those games which once you get to the last stage, it repeats all 32 stages again at a harder difficulty. So going up to RC Pro M. And obviously, I have a lot of games on this playlist right now. So RC Pro M is what I'm looking for. <laughs> Should be the very first thing on there, under R. Because of the periods in the title. There we go. RC Pro Am. Bam. Run. Meet one of the most incredibly difficult games of all time. I mean, without a doubt. But I'm going to give you a set of training rules to help you guys and gals out here. Go into Retro Excited. Input. Go all the way down to where it says Hockey Binds. This is incredibly great for RPGs, especially where you have the long extended sequences and such. So Hockey Binds. You can do fast forward for the RPGs. Either hold or toggle, but right now I'm going to go to rewind and I'm going to specify this to be on my R trigger. Again, when you're done, push the start button to turn it back off, but uh, you can have it on with the R trigger. And another thing that's very, very important and crucial when you're doing a rewind thing is uh, once you have it uh, calibrated to your controller, you're going to need to go into frame throttle right here, and you can go to rewind and turn it on. And this is a big thing. Make sure it's off 100% of the time unless you're actually playing the game that supports it. So make sure you just turn it on while you're in game to test it because if you actually uh say for instance try to run a particular arcade game that doesn't support it and you have a rewind enabled like this on 
permanently, you're going to end up going to the main user interface. It'll crash on you. Some games simply do not support this option at all. So have it off all the time, except if you're running a game where you know it's going to work. It runs on all NES games just fine with the FCMM, Nystopia, Quick NES Core. But for Super Nintendo, running it particularly on the SNES 9X 2005 Core, if you try to run it on 2010, 16, 18, or X, it's probably going to be slow motion for you. But let's resume this right now. Let's check out this incredibly difficult game. And we got rewind if we need to use it, if we miss any power-ups. Again, the game is not even remotely easier, even if you use rewind. Oh no, I missed that. Bam! Don't you wish you could rewind like that in real life? Kind of like the Nicolas Cage movie next? Okay. <laughs> And yes, I played this so many times, and I love having, like, every incarnation of this. I really, really love the Mega Drive version of this called Championship Pro-Am, which has uh, niftier graphics and uh, music. And RC Pro-Am 2 is actually a four-player mode exit of the game with a turbo tap. But yes, once you get to the 30-second stage in this game, it is ridiculously difficult. Let's not miss these power-ups or letters. You need all of these. And for the first few stages, you can actually be somewhat imperfect and still get first place, but it gets much more tremendously difficult as you go on, because you have uh, some of the racers will actually speed past you and lap you like four entire times. It gets ridiculous. And if you like this game, you also like Cobra Triangle, also made by Rare. And we all know Rare went on to make Go9 and so on. A very, very cool game here, and again, the rewind. It's a set of training wheels to help you get used to the game, but it's not going to help you get to the 30-second stage. You're still going to have trouble regardless, even if you rewind. Bam, bam. Oh, I missed that power-up. What am I going to do? Let's get that power-up. Let's see what else we're going to get here. Oh, no, I missed that tire. Oh, no, I spun out. Let's go back and redux that entire thing. Oops. Third time's the charm. We got this. Very, very cool, though. Kind of reminds me of that Tomb Raider in Hitman games where you have to make the moves and you can rewind the moves. One more lap. I got this. And I hate when I've made, uh, like, games like this and, uh, currently, we actually point in the direction you want to stare. It's ridiculous. But we're gonna go, uh, back and uh, disable that rewind completely. Again, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Input, hockey binds. It's good to keep it off unless you're actually using it. But for RPGs, it is amazingly awesome to have fast forward uh, toggle where you just have it on or you can just do the hold where you hold it down to do it. But we're going to go to rewind and I'm going to disable it. Bam. Back to the default keyboard key. Then we're going to go down to frame throttle. And I'm going to go to uh, turn rewind back off. And we're good to go. Now I'm going to go back to the main user interface and I'm going to show you uh, the version of it that is on the Mega Drive. Briefly before I end this video. Let's go up to my Mega Drive games and my lineup here. And the very cool thing about this system is you can have over 100 games in your main user interface, unlike on the other mini uh, classics. So we have uh, Mega Drive here, and we're going to do Championship pro M real quick, which should be on my list somewhere around here. There we go. Very, very cool. And they didn't call it RC pro M, so it could e easily fall between the cracks as far as you see in it. But it's exactly the same game but it has better graphics and music. Let's see if I'm gonna push the right button here. I got the right button. Look at these nice upgraded visuals. This is awesome. Everything in the same location here. Bam. The only thing I kinda wish they would have for this game is like music while you're in the stages. I mean, it has some incredibly coincidental music every once in a while, but I would love to have like music on the entire time. And last but not least, if you really, really love these title games, another game I'd highly recommend here is the game that is a spiritual successor to it, which is on PlayStation 1, called RC The Go, which is also on my playlist here. Should be down just a few. Uh, we're going to go to RC The Go on my PlayStation list, right here. And this is a beautiful, beautiful game indeed. I remember having so much difficulty finding this game in stores, I actually had to get it uh, online like via distributor at the time. It was just impossible. I don't mean like online because it wasn't like out in the in the heyday of the internet age. I actually had to kind of call somebody and have them order for me. That type of online. There we go. 
If you like RC Pro M, you're, you're gonna love this game. There's so much RC Pro M, it's ridiculous. And title for the win. We all love our title games. Darius. Elevator Action. I mean, list goes on. Legend of the Cage. Kid Nicky. Yes, Kid Nicky was actually made by Tidal. Actually, I take that back. It was made by Davey East. Sorry. Davey East uh, made it. Sorry. That's my bad. I want to do a quick race real quick. You can do championship mode as well. And uh, the thing about championship mode is you can actually earn money to upgrade your uh, vehicles and such. We'll do on road. Okay. Look how cool this is. There's so much RC Pro on this ridiculous. Okay. First, you got to race to the bar. Try to complete the course within the time limit. Three, two, RC Pro-Am for the win. Go. Look how awesome this is. I'll definitely get first place on this, still right? The you still got time to turn things around. It sounds like the guy from Wave Race <laughs> and Hydro Thunder. It's always like that same announcer. It seems like it is that guy. Yes, you can actually upgrade your vehicles and get some all kinds of cool stuff. Let me get first place. I don't think I'm going to get it this time, but I'll try. Two more placements. Come on, we got this. One more. Give me this. Oh, I bumped. I'm going to lose this. One mistake cost me to race. There we go. Come on, come on. Oh, what a fail. I should have lost there, but I got it. They gave me enough of a window to make this. But I love this game, and it's such a cool game. I also like in-gen racing, which is a nice Gran Turismo-style game with airplanes. But hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be more to come.